Thank God I'm born again. Born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. Praise Jesus. Welcome to the Daily Affection with Brother James. Um, uh, this is day 48. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in and staying connected with us. Uh, it's a, a blessing. Uh, and please, you should take some time and uh, share the link with the brothers and sisters and uh, people around so that they can know what the Lord is doing. Praise Jesus. Yeah. Uh, we are speaking today about uh, being vindicated by the Spirit. Um, when you see first, uh, let's go to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Yeah, you see it on the screen. And uh, I, I want you to get this verse. Uh, and you can even memorize it. You can even have it in your mind. Praise Jesus. You can have it. You can, you can, you know, ponder on it. And, and I'm telling you, the more you have it in you, throughout the day while you're doing different things, uh, God is speaking. The Spirit of God is speaking through the verse. You see, sometimes people ask themselves, how, God, how does God speak? One of the ways He speaks is through His Word. And His, His Word is in himself and is in you and the way you activate the word that is in you is when you relate to the word that is outside the written scriptures which remind you of what you already have in you by the way once the scriptures are not in you they can never have a place in you, how much you can read them. <laughs> That's why uh, secular people, everyone, uh, even legalistic people, they can memorize scripture, but the scripture, the life in the scripture can't come alive and active in their lives. Why? No foundation. I mean, scripture goes alive and uh, Scripture goes and dwells in you when you're born again. And the day you are filled with the Spirit, the Scriptures are activated. And they are activated as you also read them. Let's go to First Timothy chapter 1, verse 13. Look at what the Bible says. Brother Paul, the father of godliness among humans, among men of his day, until today, because I say it previously, and uh, I quoted 1 Corinthians 11, 1. Paul couldn't tell us, imitate me as I imitate Christ. If he knew that he was not worthy to be imitated, God could not speak that through him because all scripture is God-breathed. And it's useful. It has a purpose and a plan. So the purpose of Paul speaking and saying, imitate me, imitate me, imitate me, imitate me, means the people of his day, they saw him as before Paul, Jesus, the people of his day saw him. They beheld. They looked. They touched. So how do we see Jesus and how do we touch Jesus today? How do we hear Jesus today? They had him physically with him. They had him eye to eye. They were called eyewitnesses. They had him face to face. Today, no face to face. Spirit to spirit. <laughs> not face to face anymore but spirit to spirit your spirit testifies with his spirit your spirit is in agreement with his spirit that everything that God said shall come to pass the spirit groans inside of you 
And he cries out, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. And you've been united and you've been made one with him. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so, uh, today uh, uh, um, I want us to look at uh, uh, the scripture again. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Beyond all question, the mystery of godliness is great. He appeared in the body. He appeared in the body. In other words, God became human. The word became flesh. The word you see in Genesis, let there be, but God is not physical, he's spiritual. The God you see who is speaking to Eve and Adam, 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 where are you? This is Genesis chapter 3 verse 9. Adam, Adam, where are you? They are hearing his voice, but they can't see him. His spirit. Genesis throughout Malachi and he would vindicate. That word, he was vindicated, was vindicated by the spirit. The next thing after he appeared in the body. In Genesis, Genesis throughout Malachi, God is spirit. And he's releasing word after word. He's setting a man apart after one a man after another. One man after another. He's setting up them apart for his plan and purpose to come into the realities of man. God is establishing his kingdom through man by setting apart one man. Resting, his spirit rests on that one man and he does wonders. That's what you see beginning with you know, uh, uh, Enoch, who destroyed Anakites. After Enoch, you will see uh, his, his descendants. You will see Methuselah, Methuselah, Noah, all the way down to descendants of Noah, Abraham, Taylor, Taylor, Abraham, all the way down. Until now, the Israelites here, 12 tribes, The New Testament begins. God becomes flesh. I told you that. And the whole essence of God becoming flesh. I told you. It was to end the human struggle. Who are you, oh man? The other day I was explaining the love of God. The love of God is not displayed in what he does. In what he gives. On dying on the cross. Let me tell you, let me, people who say that God, you know, uh, his love is seen in his cross, that he died for us. Oh yeah, that's part of us. That's part of it because the way he showed his love to us is taking on our sin and be crucified in our place. But that's a sign. That's what shows you. That he loves you. But the reality of his love is seen in how much he cares and how much he was willing to be one of us, as in, in our human defaults, so that he can end human struggle, human vulnerability. And so, brothers and sisters, look at this. God became a uh, after he became man, I want you to know this. A godly man, a man who is born again, he does not do, he does not do the godly things by his power. I told you godliness is the manifestation of godly character, which is referred to as the Holy Spirit uh, fruit, the fruit of the Spirit. When I say the Holy Spirit fruit, when you see the fruit of the Spirit, it is not your spirit. It is the Spirit of God. Bearing fruit to you and to the people around you. Why fast to you? God does not want you to become a post. God does not want you to become just a bunch of speaking uh, sound something. No. A noise maker. No. God wants you to experience it and then give it. He wants you to live it and then give it. He wants you to have it and then give it. 
give it. The day you're born again, you have it. You had it. Now you are having it in you. And then for it to come out is you experience, uh, uh, for it to come out is you're taught, you're trained. So there's something I wanted to tell you about bearing fruit. Bearing fruit is by the Spirit. That's why you see, he was vindicated by the Spirit. You need to demonstrate high level of excellency. You need to demonstrate high level of wisdom. You need to demonstrate, I mean, you need to be wise. I mean, you need to be strong. I mean, like, okay, we live in the world. You know what the world is doing to us every day. You to overcome the world daily. It's not in your power. <laughs> Hello. Like, know it. Know it. You need to know it. It's never you. Salvation is not in your power. Salvation experience is not in your power as well. When I say salvation is not in your power, I mean the package of salvation itself, the embedment of salvation itself. Christ did not come in the world because you asked for him. Were you here when he came? No, you're not. But a day came, you were tired of the world, and then you received him. <laughs> After you received him, to experience him, it's not in your power as well. When he comes, the spirit of truth, that's why he's called counselor, he's called helper, he's called vindicator, he's called comforter, he's called so many names, that all lead to one thing. Leading us into godliness. Lead to one thing. Leading us into... That word then being led by the Spirit is following the way of the Spirit. The thoughts of the Spirit. The mind of the Spirit. The perception of the Spirit. Everything is of the Spirit, not you. Words of the Spirit. Jesus comes in John chapter 16, verse 63. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and life. Their flesh profits nothing. Their flesh profits not. It's not in the flesh that these things can happen. Never. It is in their spirit. Everything is in the spirit of Jesus Christ. I mean, the will of God, the purpose of God, the plan of God, the divine nature of God, everything of God. The deity of God, everything of God, the blessing of God, everything of God, the promises of God, everything of God, everything you need, the peace of God, the joy of the Lord, everything is in the spirit. <laughs> so you want it in the natural, never you will never say it. You want to, you want to attain it in your own effort, strength. There is no amount of prayers you can pray. There is no amount of fasting you can fast. There is no, boy, there is nothing you can do. That's why he says, abide in me and I abide in you. If a man does not abide in me, he can do nothing. Go read John 15.5. You will see it. Abiding in him. So abiding in him is constantly being reminded of the words of the Spirit. And the words of the Spirit come when you've read the Bible, when you have read 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. <laughs> Beyond all question, the mystery of godliness is great. He appeared in the body, was vindicated by the Spirit. Vindicated by the Spirit, it means his life was based on the Spirit, based on the power of the Spirit, not your power. In other words, do not worry, it is in the power of the Spirit. Do not fear, it is in the power of the Spirit. Your life is not in your power. If you're worried about your life, what can you do about it? If you're fearful about the future, what can you do about it? One time in Matthew 6, Jesus asked his disciples, he asked them this question. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour? Can you add any hour? Can you add any minute? Can you add any moment to life? No, you cannot. He who gave you the life, not only the natural life, the vitality of life, this natural life, 
also and the spiritual life as well salvation as well it's not in your power he will give you the gift of life natural life he will give you the gift of life salvation he is the one who is in control the, let me tell you you need to be a baby about life you need to be a child about life you need to be like a child in matters concerning to life that's why jesus says be like the little children why they worry about nothing everything is the shepherd <laughs> worry about but when i say worry about nothing so not just be there be lazy no no when you have trouble when trouble comes be like okay trouble what are you okay laba cobra go shetala dinto you begin to search out scriptures you begin to talk to your father next as you're speaking to scripture uh, you're speaking scripture you're speaking to scripture the speak, scripture is speaking to you you're going through the scriptures you're speaking to your father you're praying in tongues you're praying uh, in, with all kinds of prayer you're thanking god for everything he's going to do before you see it next the situations have no power the conditions of this natural life no power why It's not in your power to control them, to reverse them. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. When he, he says, I have overcome the world, he means now after Jesus overcame the world and on our behalf. Now the Spirit, what, what the Spirit does, He always reminds you. The Spirit does not do anything like pushing back darkness. No! Christ pushed back darkness. So the Spirit... What the spirit does is he gives you the wisdom. I've seen this. He reminds you of what Jesus did. He he takes what is of Jesus, he makes it known to you. What is of Jesus? He conquered the grave. What is of Jesus? He conquered the world. What is of Jesus? He overcame the world. What is of Jesus? He never got sick. What is of Jesus? He was never poor. What, what, what is of Jesus? He was divine. What is, what is of Jesus? He was a man of peace. What is of Jesus? Or is patient. What is of Jesus? Oh my God. Everything that is of Jesus, he gives it to you daily. Ah, it's too much. It's not by power or might or you zero but power is by the spirit of God. Born of the water and the spirit of God. Thank God I'm born again. Born, born, born again. Thank God I'm born again. In that same chapter five, chapter three of John, where he speaks about born again, he speaks about the spirit as well. What is born of the flesh is flesh and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Next, after you're born again, you become a spirit and you're vindicated by the spirit. The first thing the spirit does, he declares to you the righteousness of God. He tells you you're righteous no matter what you've done. You're righteous, you're holy by the grace of God. You're sanctified in the Holy Ghost. Oh, it's too much. Let's go next to... Oh, he was seen by angels. He was seen by angels. Okay, you too. Are you seen by angels? No, you're not seen by angels. You were served by angels. Let's go next to the next episode where I'll be giving you the details about being served by angels. You're loved, blessed, and good.